Hello everybody! In today's Touch Designer tutorial, we would actually see how to create this wonderful, smooth and satisfying animation with very few selected components or nodes of Touch Designer. It's Monday morning in Sydney here and I'm very excited to bring this wonderful tutorial so that you guys can also produce some of the most fascinating, satisfying design. The, the fascinating thing about this is it is very smooth. You can just keep on looking at it again and again, and you can just put it up on your uh, TV or computer screen. So I just thought of creating this tutorial that everybody would really like to simulate this in their, um, or for themselves as well. The other reason for me to produce this tutorial was when I was actually going through the list of comments, I did come across this guy. He asked me that, can you get me a tutorial on this? I was like, okay, let's give it a try. And you know, um, well, I'm sure like he's going to be very happy. So yeah, uh, the other thing is I would want to show you how small the network is. The network is very, very small and you'd be surprised how such small networks can produce some of the best outputs. So let's get going and uh, we'll start with our new tutorial. All right, so first thing first, let's go and clear the canvas and uh, let's start with circle swap. Now here we would be using instancing as a technique. So we'll, we'll go with that. So let's, let's start with the basic foundation first. So I've got circle, then let's go with no. Let's assign this to a geometry and let's have camera. Let's have render, then we'll have no. This looks good. Let's assign the material, which is constant at this point of time. So this looks good. Now I just want to produce the output. Let's see how well it is turning out. Okay, the circle is amazing, but it's very big. Let's reduce the radius to 0.1. Okay, it's still coming out to be very big. Let's reduce radius furthermore, and let's make it to 0.004 for now. Now, since we want to produce instancing, so let's enable, no, oh, let's add circle. So let's have circle, let's have no. Now here's the thing. In this circle, the division that I would want to go with is for uh, 12. And I can make it open or close, it doesn't matter. But yeah, we'll, we'll just keep it open. Now let's use this null to produce the instancing. So let's enable the instancing. We have got translate op. So let's go here, let's have p0. So as and when I'm trying to add things, you'd actually get to know that um, the points are increasing. Let's have p1 and let's have p2. Uh, the other thing that we want to be, uh, we should be doing is let's go to common property. Here the resolution is, um, we would want to make it as 1024 by 1024. So it pretty much gives that cent uh, square look. So perfect for Instagram upload. Uh, the pixel format, we would want to change uh, from 8-bit fix to 32-bit float for uh, very crispy animation. Uh, this looks pretty good. Uh, we can see that there is a space which is hollow that can be filled by increasing the radius of our instant circle. So let's increase the radius to the point that makes uh, things comfortable for us. Okay, this looks nice. Now this is where uh, the feedback is going to come. So let's introduce a feedback uh, network. So let's start with feedback, let's have uh, level, let's have transform, let's have composite, let's have RGB key, and the final one is going to be null. Okay, looks perfect. Let's rearrange them in a nicer way. Let's go with this. Okay. Let's go with that. So we are connecting our comp and we are setting up our feedback network. Let's have composite going as a target top for feedback. We'll make it as add. And instead of null2 as our output, let's have null4 as our output. Perfect. So this looks nice. Let's play with transform so at least we know that feedback top is working. 
So as you can see, as and when we are moving, as and when we are doing changes, it does produce us that particular output, so which is pretty good. Now, this is where the effect is going to come into picture. So let's set things up and let's um, set up pulse. So we are clearing up um, all the past impression from feedback network. Now, the technique that we would be using is the rotation and scale. Now, for scale to be um, uh, dynamic, I'm actually going to use a noise uh, chop. So let's have noise chop. And uh, so this is where uh, we're going to play around. So I'll set offset as 0.95 and I'll have amplitude as 0.5. So what's going to happen is my amplitude of the noise is going to range from 0.95 plus and minus 0.5. So 0 0.05, sorry. So that way things are just going to be perfect uh, the way in which I need it. And I'll go and I'll change it as time slice. So this gives a pretty good um, uh, easy way for us to drag and drop the uh, values of channel one. So let's enable this. Let's go to transform and let's set it as, as a scale. So at least we know that things are working out. The other thing that I would want to do is play around with rotation. So let's, let's go and play around with rotation. So as and when we see, we're doing rotation and things are anyways turning out to be the way in which I need it. However, to make things more interesting, what am I going to do is I would actually use an LFO. So that LFO will ensure that on a constant basis, we are giving that rotation effect to it. The other thing that we want to make sure is we do not exceed the rotation value more than 20. So let's let's go with that and we'll actually get to know. So I'm setting up as 20, the frequency I'm going to set it up as 0.1 for now. Uh, we'll just see how well it is turning out and probably we can play around with the frequency of it. We can also work on sine function depending on how, how well my output is turning out to be. So let's use this and uh, apply it as the rotation value. And there you go. So this is something that we definitely wanted to see and the output is turning out to be uh, beautiful. Uh, the other thing that you may want to do is play around with a little bit of noise. So instead of amplitude as 0 0.05, let's set it up as um, 0.7. So you'll see much more depth and uh, we can also play around with the period. So the other thing that you certainly can do is play around with amplitude. So instead of uh, 0 0, uh, 0.07, let's have it as 0 0.05 and we'll actually set offset as 0.97. So it, it again gives you a different uh, type of um, animation. But yeah, pretty much these are the properties that uh, you can work around. Uh, the other thing that we can try and do is play around with the amplitude. So instead of 20, let's make it as 25. So you can see a uh, much different look, but it still becomes like um, very uh, fast. So instead of going with 20, uh, 25, we can just set it up as 20. So it's, it's pretty simple, it's a pretty decent way of producing this output and it can just, the other thing, oh, uh, the other thing that you can try and do is you can change the frequency from uh, 0.1 to 0 0.05 so that the rotation is very, very smooth. It's not that fast and uh, it still gives that uh, really pleasing look that we would want to achieve. So yeah, at the end of the day, with very few components, with very few things, you will be able to produce some of the best output. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, I'll come with some more uh, such satisfying animation tutorial and um, yeah, it'll be a good learning for all of you to go around and explore some new techniques of touch designer. Well, so I'll sign off from Sydney at this point of time and uh, I'll catch you up with new tutorial um, probably next week. Thank you. Bye for now.